free racing pigeon tips and lots of info, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at the links and email below. What exactly is the meaning of inbreeding? With inbreeding we are compiling genes, good ones as well as bad ones, from those special pigeons we are concentrating on in our breeding program. The chances of getting youngsters with identical genes increases as we step up the rate of inbreeding. The trouble is that on the one hand as we concentrate, we will at the same time lose ground in the areas of vitality and the ability to come into shape. Sure you may find an inbred pigeon with plenty of vitality. In a case as this it's safe to say that this pigeon has a genotype not as concentrated as you hoped it would be. Still, it may win you many prizes. Concerning its offspring however, you may find that it won't pass on to them what could have been expected, judging by the pedigree. Now you have done the inbreeding the right way and you end up with a degenerative looking bird, who lacks vitality and doesn't seem to get itself into shape well. There's not much hope for such a pigeon to fall into the prizes. But it is quite well possible that the offspring will win big when she is crossbred with the right bird. That's where most fanciers go wrong. They get rid of what they consider to be the less successful results of inbreeding and they keep the liveliest ones. The idea behind inbreeding is concentrating of special genes. Those fanciers select incorrectly and keep the birds with very few of those special genes they are supposed to transmit to the next generation. Remember, a piling up of genes goes together with a loss in vitality. What would be the right system for inbreeding? I once read in an article by the late John Lambrex that a system of remote inbreeding was the only way to do it. I do not agree with this. At one time I had in my flock the best lines from the continuously bred stock of Desmet Matias, and De Bear Brothers. Before I started to breed with them I first made sure that these lines were suitable for crossing. After that I drew up a plan how best to pair them. I used to have excellent results with this type of remote inbreeding. In the generation which followed however, I noticed that slowly, but surely, I was loosing in the quality of the breeding material, and in the quantity of good flyers. When I became aware of this my next question was, where do I go from here? In 1974, I stayed at the home of Professor Alphonse Anker for quite some time. After the lectures he gave me on his lifetime work, population genetics, I became obsessed with the subject. Together with him I have explored all that which can be applied to breeding. Since I was convinced by then that it is possible to breed good flyers as well as good breeders, following a set schedule, we proceeded putting together a theoretical concept and drew up plans for pairing. I have been breeding according to that schedule ever since and hardly ever have I strayed away from it. As you can see, quite a bit of inbreeding. This is even more so since the Desmet Matias flock itself has also been inbred. What about the dreaded degeneration problem? When working according to such a concentrated schedule of inbreeding, as I did for several years, you logically would expect to notice signs of degeneration. But so far so good. As a matter of fact, the opposite seems to be true, the eyes improved in color and have more pigmentation, with pupils as small as pinheads. There was no noticeable change in the muscle quality while the build stayed the same as well, the cocks being on the big side and the hens quite fine. I observed no external signs of degeneration at all. The offspring became much better, as breeding stock, as we concentrated more on Clarin 46. It was also very nice to notice that the pigeons at the same time performed well. However, I'm not about to tell you that my experience is the only gospel. It is important, when practicing inbreeding to keep a close eye on the following. 1. With inbreeding some characteristics, such as vitality, endurance and getting into form, slowly deteriorate. The reason for this is that only a few genes are involved in transmitting these characteristics and therefore they are the first ones to backslide. It is possible to counteract this by crossbreeding with the right bird after inbreeding. You may get some very positive results with this. 2. There are other very important characteristics which are indispensable in the pigeon sport and they also positively are influenced by inbreeding. Crossbreeding however, doesn't improve them. Again, these characteristics are determined by hundreds of genes and they all are transmitted intermediary which means that the end product is half of the sum of what both parents contribute, no matter if we practice inbreeding or crossbreeding. It becomes quite evident then that the only road to take is the one involving rigorous selection together with a well-planned breeding schedule. Let us not forget the primary reasons for inbreeding. In the first place we're after valuable genes of an extraordinary pigeon. Secondly, we try to collect a high concentration of a certain pedigree. When we concentrate in our breeding schedule on a special pigeon, and as the concentration rises, we may expect that the results will be as follows. 1. Many more pigeons in this pedigree will be carrying genes from the special bird on which we concentrated our schedule. 2. The transmitting power of the birds obtained from this breeding program increases in value if the common ancestor was indeed very special. 3. 
these pigeons will slowly loosen appearance. At the same time they will become less successful racers, even more so on long and difficult races which puts an extra burden on their bodies. Conclusion, while they loose in body strength, they gain as breeders. In bred pigeons are best suited as breeders the first generation can be crossbred very successfully, but they are not very successful as racers, especially not in the category of hard day and long distance races. This appears to be a general rule. Free racing pigeon tips and lots of info, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at the links and email below. There are many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment. Free racing pigeon tips and lots of info, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at the links and email below. There are many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment. free racing pigeon tips and lots of info, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at the links and email below.